Another negative day in South Africa, 11.16 billion rand or so passing through the markets. A big focus on the NPC and the commodity price slump that we're seeing. Karine, it's been a very volatile week. I think we're back to exactly the same levels uh, mm. we were at when I was last year, about 31,600. So nothing has changed. What mm. can we say? <clears throat> what has changed is the rand has weakened uh, tremendously. I think when we were last year, it was about 6 rand 60. We're now at 6 rand 90. And we've seen um, a lot of commodity prices come, more specifically oil, from about 120 to 114. Copper's down, platinum's down, um, gold is down, and so on. So the markets have reacted um, you know, in relation to that. We've seen mainly the resource index come down at the moment heavily under pressure, but uh, still finding support. You know, there, there really hasn't been a massive sell off, in my opinion, having a look at the markets this morning. We're still holding support on the JSE. Uh, we did dip down to about 31,500 and we're closing uh, around about 31,680. So we're finding support at this level of 31,500, 31,400, which is where we were last week as well. So again, I just think it's one of these very volatile weeks yeah. that we are in a lot of news out there, a lot of um, discourse with buyers and sellers and um, in my opinion I'm still a buyer at these levels so well, I that's think that's fascinating good you're talking about us finding resistance in the backdrop of a very uh, volatile environment when it comes to commodities I mean China hiking banks uh, reserve requirements once again copper inventories in China shooting through the roof we've got troubles coming through in Greece so this is not reason enough for you to sell out of the market but hold on and in fact buy we really need to take a big step back and look at the bigger picture just because we have inventories that are are, are high in China and just because we are seeing um, you know, monetary policy, they're being tightened a little bit and putting a bit of a stop on their um, massive increases in GDP and so on, doesn't mean demand's going to completely slump. You know, we are still going to need a hell of a lot of copper, a lot of iron ore, a lot of coal, a lot of oil. The demand is still there. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at is the honest demand from a world perspective still there for these commodities and yes it is it hasn't gone away it is cyclical it does move up and down we do have uh, months of of great positivity we have months of great negativity but the general trend in my mind is still positive and keeping that in mind throughout all this noise quite frankly is what's very yeah. very important uh, also fascinating to note that the IEA uh, talking about slightly more depressed oil demand going forward because of the elevated oil prices so demand destruction in a sense that also not creating justice for you it seems I mean would Sassel still be a buy? Sort the question of is what levels? alternative is there to oil you know there isn't anything um, so yes you are going to get the general cyclical move of the oil price reaches such an extent that you know people stop consuming it I would say but I mean we don't have another alternative to that so yes I would think Sassel from a more medium term perspective and down 1.5 percent today we're sitting at 350 still holding on to 350 so mm. like I said anything below 360 in my mind is still definitely a buy and with the Rand where it is now at 6 Rand 92 I mean the Rand mm. price of oil is probably actually going up at the moment rather than um, coming down currently. Um, Able. Yes. Under significant pressure today. Down I saw that actually. 35 rand, 65 cents, and saying that headline earnings per share should increase by around 20%. Yeah. It seems that mo most market participants were waiting for a 30% rise in earnings. So uh, Yeah, we were having a look at the numbers and we were working it out. Yeah. And um, I think we're looking at about 1 rand 35 if you take the 20% increase on the previous year's numbers. I think the market was looking for 1 rand 50. I think for a full year guidance, we're looking for about 3 rand 15, 3 rand 20. So unfortunately, a little bit below market expectations and it was really hit down almost 5% at the moment. Would I still be buying? Um, yeah, if Able can get down to 35 Rand, I still think it's an incredible buy. Well, I mean, uh, exactly, when a, a stock slumps so significantly, I'm d down almost 5%. Well, look, I mean, and, and a to stock be that is very much loved in the JSC uh, base, purely because it's got that, that banking element and it has actually done very well despite all the crises that we've seen playing out in South Africa. I think from the um, financial opinion and from like a financial exposure, I would, I would really look at the, the Ables and the Capitex of this world. I would still steer clear of your major banks, but you know, the two micro lenders are doing incredibly well in general. And uh, you know, one can argue that the financial sector is undervalued. Um, and to partake in that um, undervalued levels, I would I would really look at Able as being a very good entry point. You're getting a good, good dividend yield mm -hmm. and a very fairly well established business and a, a very good growing business at the moment. It's just it will be good to see the full numbers and the full set of results um, when they are released just to delve in a little bit deeper. But uh, nothing's really changed in my mind. I think 35 Rand if it could get down to there is a good buying opportunity. 
Looking at Old Mutual, also out with some interesting numbers today. The stock down almost 3%, sitting at... Very interesting numbers. Rand, I wish you could explain it to me as well. I, I read through it. I don't understand it. I don't really you? don't. Unfortunately, um, it's a very difficult thing for me to understand insurance businesses. And this was a three-month um, you know, results update, just to mm. say things are still going along all right. And I, I read through it a couple of times, and I was like, it sounds good, but I still don't understand what you guys are up to at the moment. So um, I think the only positive news that they reiterated there was the selling of their life business in America yeah. um, but I've always steered clear of insurance companies purely because I don't really understand where they make do their money. Do you take insurance out? Do you I do insurance? look I've got insurance <laughs> okay. you've got insurance but uh, <laughs> generally speaking it's very difficult to value a company um, that that is based in mainly in, in insurance and in that in that respect I, I tend to steer clear of those. Okay so construction material supplier Afrimat. So I remember when they listed a yeah slightly smaller, slightly, bit. A slightly smaller company earnings per share rising almost four percent. Look we don't really look at them that, yeah. that closely because it is very very small and it is in this terrible sector of construction mm. which everybody is very uh, negative uh, towards but um, they they listed with all these other um, construction businesses and um, aggregates businesses and, and really suffered tremendously but I think what you're seeing is a lot of life coming through from a mining sense that a lot of these companies are actually benefiting from mining exposure you've actually seen that uh, with bigger companies like Barlow World and Afrimat and even you know Protec with the Eleni um, you know mm. if you're having a look at their upcoming results as well so I think that will be um, a lifesaver for them, but uh, I'd still be a little bit cautious getting involved in the smaller businesses in that sector at the moment. Well, it's fascinating because some of the investors out there, we know contrarian views, mm. buy into the construction space. We still don't know how much downside we could experience, but uh, offering value. It makes a market, a you know, track. some say no, some say, say yes. yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but the point is that some of these smaller companies are actually starting to look slightly better off than the larger companies. Correct, would you correct. Say? It's true. It's 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 tempting, but um, you know, I still think it's a little bit of a risk. You know, for our clients' money, we tend to be a little bit more conservative. So we tend to go for more of your top 40, more established businesses with at least some kind of a, a projection idea going forward. Because if you're willing forward. to buy a JSU all share at these levels and buy and, and allocate new money into stock, surely that means that you're positive about the the outlook going forward, which means you should be positive. Absolutely, about Absolutely, I'm more. No, true. I mean, I'm more. I'm more. I'm more positive towards resources and commodities yeah. in general. So if we're looking at construction companies that solely benefit from the mining sector, absolutely. But there's so much more to a construction company than just yeah. building a few coal mines and so on. We've really got a depressed construction sector in general. And I do think tough times are still ahead on a lot of these companies. If you're looking for a value investor, I guess, yeah. you know, and that's, and, that's, and that's very, very important to ask. If you're a pure value investor, then yes, you could argue quite correctly construction would be um, a good starting point and some of your financials at the moment, mm -hmm. whereas industrials are looking a little bit stretched at the moment and so are uh, most, most, most commodity stocks. Um, our house view is a little bit different. You know, we tend to look more at the global picture of things and look where, where, where we are going globally. And in our opinion, globally, um, commodities are certainly on, um, on the increase with regards to demand. And oil and energy and coal, copper and iron ore, that's really where we want to be. And obviously companies that benefit from emerging market growth as well. So your South African breweries, your Richemonts and so on. That's where we really want to be. Um, you know, if you've got a client that's really demanding, I want pure value, I want to take a little bit of a punt in something, yeah. then yes, we could look at a few Afrimats, absolutely. But I'm not excited about it just yet.